Community Cats podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I have been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. Today, we're speaking with Dr. Sarah Pisano, who is the program director of Target Zero. She is a past guest of ours, and she was previously on episode number 56. So if you're interested in finding out more about her story and how she got involved with Target Zero, feel free to check out that episode by going to the communitycatspodcast.com website and just in the search bar, put in number 56 or Dr. Sarah Pisano, and her episode will come right up. But today, I'd like to welcome Sarah to the show, and she's going to share some big news with us. Well, thank you so much, Stacey, for having me again. I'm I'm very honored to be on your podcast. And we have we have so much to share and we're so humbled that Maddie's Fund has recently given us a $750,000 grant to continue our work. That's a three-year grant, so $250,000 a year for three years. And that is just, you know, an amazing alignment and partnership, of course, with Maddie's Fund. So we're, we're very honored to be one of their uh, grantees. That's fantastic. And and is, are there more specific details and goals with regards to that grant? Really, just to continue our work. And they have been watching our progress the last three and a half years and have been so impressed with it. So it is it was really just to continue to do what we've already been doing. That's great. And then you also had mentioned a project that you have going on in the Kentucky area. Yes. So this project is very interesting and such an important story. And I think what I will remind your listeners several times throughout this story is to really just try to think outside the box, to not say, oh, well, it's never been done. So it's not something that we would think about. And that's really the point of this story. The Joni Bernard Foundation is a foundation in the Cincinnati area exclusively for cats. And we've worked with them for the last three and a half years within their 100 mile radius of Cincinnati. And they've been just a great and generous partner for us. And it's how we got involved with Northern Kentucky. The state of Kentucky is split into districts of anywhere between eight and 15 counties. And Kentucky is pretty much on the bottom of the list in terms of save rates and animal welfare. So there were shelters in that district in particular. There's eight shelters, four handle cats and dogs, four only dogs. But there was a great need um, in especially two of those shelters at the time had very low save rates, in particular for cats. But the Joni Bernard Foundation had maxed out their giving to the nonprofits, and we knew there was a great need. So that's not acceptable to Target Zero. So here we have the funding, right? And we have a need, but no way to actually get the funding where the need is. So we met with leaders from the Northern Area Kentucky Development District, which is a people, you know, it's local government that deal with human issues. And we knew they had a nonprofit arm and they've never done anything in animal welfare. So again, this is the point. We approached them and said, could you take this grant from the Joni Bernard Foundation and could we organize this program so that you reimburse service providers with that grant money? And they said, yes. And that's what happened. Can you explain that in a little bit more detail? So the the foundation gave money to the, is it a community development organization or is it a municipality that you're talking about? Well, it is a group, is eight municipalities that already have a group that work together on human issues. So we wrote this grant and said, this grant money will be for those outside cats instead 
of going into the shelter to be diverted to spay, neuter, ear tip, rabies vaccination and return to their outside home, friendly or feral. It's for community cats that people might be caring for in the community. Um, so those cats, same thing, sterilized, ear tip, rabies vaccinated. And then if you're a low income cat owner in any of those eight counties, um, your surgery would be free. So the grant covers those three groups at no cost. The fourth group is if you have a cat, but you don't qualify as income targeted and your cat doesn't go outside, you may be charged $20. So with that, we started this program October 1st. And in the first quarter, we've already, which was October, November, December of 2016, which is how we're tracking per quarter, we did over 1,500 surgeries. And in two of the shelters, I'm sorry, one of the shelters, Grant County was already over 90%. Boone County was doing well with an 82% live outcome. In the first quarter, they went to 88%. Kenton County went from 42% to 70% save rate. But the greatest success and the, and the biggest celebration is Campbell County. They went from a 49% save rate for cats to 95%. Wow. In just first quarter. Amazing. And yeah, so we're, we're just so excited to have all that. We have private veterinarians involved. We have OR and UCAN, the high volume spay neuter clinics involved. It is a partnership of many public and private organizations. So again, just thinking like, listen, I don't care if they never did anything in animal welfare. We're going to ask them, you know. So you said it's a combination. So is there a voucher process involved with this? No, we don't believe vouchers are an effective way to operate these programs. So we want to make it as simple as possible. And Stacy, I also want to tell you in three of those counties, Campbell, Kenton, and Boone, their ordinances did not allow for community cat diversion programs. So we helped change all that. And we revised all those ordinances as well. But you didn't do that in that three-month period. That was done previous to that? We, we did it before. It all happened um, at the end of the summer within a month of each other, all three. Wow. Yeah, so that was amazing. And, you know, the thing is, if we go in and we have an ordinance that doesn't allow community cat programs, we go to the elected officials, who we always work with anyway about those revisions, and we, um, along with the shelter director, of course, and we ask if there could be a pilot program while the ordinance is being changed. But we were just really lucky that they all were revised within a month at the end of the summer. So that was really exciting. So one of the things that gets stuck in my mind going into these areas that are maybe sort of new to this concept is the worry about spay-neuter capacity. So how do you find enough affordable spay-neuter capacity going into these sort of new areas? Well, and, and that's the other thing we look at, right? So the capacity. And this was the perfect location for a program like this because OAR is the high-volume spay-neuter clinic for cats in Cincinnati, and UCAN is the high-volume spay-neuter clinic for cats and dogs in Cincinnati, and they both do transport. So we knew that we could get a bulk of the surgeries done, but... We also would like private veterinarians to be involved. So every veterinarian in all eight counties were invited. And so far we have four private veterinary clinics and one humane society in those counties also doing surgeries. So yes, we do look for that. And a lot of times it that transport is an important piece of it. Boone County is doing a lot of those surgeries on site. So it really is a combination of things. But you're right. Infrastructure is always a challenge. So we're very lucky in these areas to have those two spay neuter clinics and have the private veterinarians involved. We love that. Just to help my geography, how far away is the UCAN clinic or, or the other clinic from this target area in Kentucky? 
You know, it varies depending on the county and they'll go up to an hour out. But then there's other counties that are closer to the Louisville area. So we may have some of those cats outside their radius of transport going to another location. To answer your, I was starting to answer your voucher question, Stacey, I want to get back to that because I feel it's an important piece that vouchers typically don't work. We see a lot of unused vouchers and nothing drives us crazier, right? Having money sits like gift cards and that nobody uses. So here's the thing. This is what we said. All these service providers, we said, what, what, the NK ad coordinator, who's amazing, who happens, now she's a local government employee. She happens to be a cat lady. How perfect is that? And so we said, listen, here's the application to be a service provider. Every month you send your invoice to Megan, she'll cut you a check and you get your check so that the person doesn't have to take any extra steps. So it's as simple as possible. So we encourage people to avoid vouchers at all costs because they, we, we really see a lot of waste with the voucher system. So make it as simple as possible for people. Keep it super simple. Yes. If you like the Community Cats podcast and would like to help promote Community Cats in your state, then we need you. We're looking for a couple of people from each state to be Community Cats ambassadors. What do you get by being an ambassador? You'll be mailed a promo kit of items to use to help promote the show at any event that you attend in your state. If you don't attend many events, hey, that's okay too. Do you have a network of people that love community cats? You can help with emailing groups in your state to let them know about the CCP and offer them the benefit of community cat swag. The more we can spread the word about the show, the more we can do to help cats across the country. Please email Stacy, S T A C Y, at communitycatspodcast.com if you'd like to represent your state. Thank you. The Community Cats Podcast will soon be a year old with over 200 episodes profiling amazing people who are all making a difference in the lives of community cats. If you would like to support the show but not be a sponsor, feel free to contribute to our efforts by going to www.communitycatspodcast.com and follow the donate link. Help us to continue to provide excellent programming. How do you come up with these ideas? Well, because we know that the Joni Bernard Foundation had funding and we knew what we were hearing from this district where we were already you know, starting to do work is that they could not accept any more funding from the Joni Bernard Foundation. Now, the Joni Bernard Foundation does not give to public shelters. They give to nonprofits and the spay neuter clinics would be under that. But they can't go over a certain percentage of those nonprofits' budgets. And so we said, well, we have to look for another vehicle, another way that this money can be spent where the need is the greatest. Because just because they maxed out their giving in the, for those organizations doesn't mean you just stop, oh, well, we can't help that area, you know? So that's how we we started looking at other ways. And then we realized that the NKAD, the Northern Kentucky Area Development District, they had grants for people. So why couldn't they accept a grant for animals? And so that's how we, so we met with the director and said, would it be possible for you to um, reimbursed from this grant. And they said, yes. So it's almost like a community development block grant type of it's, situation. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a grant that covers eight counties and it had to go again to a nonprofit. And so the NK ad has a nonprofit arm and that served the purpose. So we were just looking, we were like, oh, we're, we're going to get these cats spayed. Like one way or the other, we're going to get these cats behaved. Right. So. And then you have one staff member that's like the project manager on site. Is that how it happens operationally? Well, no, the Target Zero field team is myself and Cameron Moore. And so the person who is um, reimbursing from the grant is an employee of the NK ad. Yeah, she works for the nonprofit arm. And they set up all the accounts and the systems. Do you do the recruiting of the organizations and then put the introductions together so that then they can piece together? 
Yes. So we wrote the grant. We met with all the potential players with respect to, you know, all the shelters that we were already working with. And then, or in UCAN, the spay neuter clinics. And then we sent a letter with the NKAD to all the veterinarians to try to recruit them for this program. So we You know, we worked with all the local shelters and NKAD to see who are the players who can help. So it was really a team effort, all of us. And are there other community projects that you're working on that are similar to this in other parts of the country? Well, a couple of things are, so because of our success in Northern Kentucky, there are seven other districts that are interested in Target Zero. And so I recently spoke at the state capitol in Frankfurt to all the directors of these development districts. So we have lots of interest in Kentucky and we're very excited about that. And we also are getting a grant to continue our work there and be able to expand in Kentucky. In Georgia, we just finished a triple assessment and we did three county shelter assessments in one week. And that region is now interested in Northwest Georgia in a Target Zero Fellowship. And we work with Fix Georgia Pets, which is a nonprofit statewide spay neuter program. And we are looking for more regions all the time. And in terms of areas, South Carolina is the state I think we have per capita, we have probably the most fellows. We have Columbia, South Carolina, Greenville, Aiken County, and Anderson County. So we have four fellows in the small state of South Carolina, and we work with No Kill South Carolina there. So, so that yeah, we are Stacy. We're always looking for regions or states. You know, the 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 brushstroke, the better, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But it seems like what you try and do is create these hubs. You know, it's not just working with one organization. You're trying to do some economies of scale in a way and working with multiple communities together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is exactly what No Kill 2025 is about. And that is the brainchild of best friends saying, Hey, we're close. You know, we, we are close to ending euthanasia as population control and we all need to collaborate and work together at the local level. And so I'm honored to be part of that steering committee. And we are looking for all these opportunities, just like what we did in Northern Kentucky. So it's to really ignite the communities at the local level to think outside the box and work together and break down these silos that we've been working in. And are there any specific goals that No Kill 2020 has? Any, um, any bullet points or is it still in the creation phase? Still in the creation phase, and we actually just attended the regional meeting. So the the United States is broken into eight regions. And so we, Target Zero, was at the southeast region because we both live in Florida, myself and Cameron. And so, again, just to start igniting that that spirit of collaboration and learning from each other. And as we move forward and you could go on bestfriends.org to learn more as well, but um, the regional meetings are happening now all over the country. So very exciting. Yeah. I'd like to circle back and go back to the Maddie's grant that you received and talk about approaching grant makers. I mean, obviously you can't get a grant like that of $750,000 to support your work over three years time without asking for it. Many of us, uh, I do a mentoring program through the community cats grant program, working with organizations who have revenues of under a hundred thousand dollars a year with a matching grant program. So they have to do a new type of fundraiser and then the community cats grants will match those spay neuter funds based on the amount of money that they raise up to a thousand dollars. Many small groups don't even know or feel the confidence in being able to ask for money. What would you say to a small group that is new to grant writing? I would say, first of all, you know, in terms of building your confidence, you are doing this for on behalf of the cats and saving their lives. So you need to get the confidence to do that and just put the nerves on the back burner. This 
about saving cats, right? And and the second thing is you need to show that you're making a positive impact with respect to creating a solution, that a donor is not going to just continuously give money and the problem is going to stay the same. And I think that's one of the reasons, in my humble opinion, why Maddie's had confidence in Target Zero, because we're looking to change how business is done. We're looking at you know, really helping shelters approach sheltering in a different way, in a strategic way that actually we believe solves problems by helping people outside of the shelter. So before the door, so whether it's targeted spay neuter, like with community cats or income targeted spay neuter or safety net programs, we need to think differently about sheltering. And so I think that helps. And then to actually have some data and have a good story, be able to tell your story in a very concise way with facts and and very positive, positive messaging, I think is really important as well. Oh, very good points. And and believe in the work you're doing and and show by example are really, I always found to be sort of the bedrock, you know, if you can show that you've done a really good job, even with just this colony on a block, you know, uh, share that story and use that as a way to convince others to be able to invest in your programs. You're so right, Stacey. And I find people saying, oh, you know, shelters and we're, we're doing so many great things, but, you know, we always get criticized. And I said, but how would anybody know? Like, you don't have these stories. Get these stories out there. If you don't tell your story, nobody's going to know all about all the amazing work that you do. And so pushing that out and getting those you know, there's, we all have a million of them, right? So we know our stories, but if we don't tell them in the most, you know, in the, in with, again, the broadest stroke, then no one else is going to know. Sarah, if folks are interested in finding out more about Target Zero and the fellowship program. How could they find you? So our website is target-zero, spelled out, Z-E-R-O.org. And you can find our assist at Target Zero email there. So please email us. We're always looking for communities that want to change how they're doing business with respect to dogs and cats. And community cats is a huge, huge part of this. We we're so grateful to you, Stacey, for helping educate and, and really help us. Us, I'm going to think differently about community cats. So thank you so much. Well, my goal is to try and get the word out about community cats and TNR out to everybody so that it's not, not something that we have to work so hard to educate everyone about. Exactly. So, yes. Sarah, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? Oh, just, you know, look for innovative, different ways, work with people that you never maybe thought were interested or that, you know, would be productive to work with, but break down those silos. And that's when the magic happens. That sounds great. Sarah, I want to thank you again for joining me on the show. And I look forward to getting an update again in the future. Thank you, Stacey. Are you new to the Community Cats podcast? Don't know what to listen to first? Feel free to check out the Listening Module tab where we have grouped shows together by topic so you can listen to a bunch of shows around the same topic. Just click on the Listening Module tab at www.communitycatspodcast.com and enjoy learning about Community Cats.